What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. And today I kind of want to address Gilbert Arenas and the whole situation with the South Sudan team who almost defeated Team USA in their second to last exhibition game before heading to Paris. Now, um, LeBron James had some heroics down the stretch and was able to help Team USA close the games out, which is good for Team USA. They're 5-0, and they know the margin for error isn't as big as it has been, you know, in previous years seasons there are a lot of teams who are capable of challenging team usa you know in a one game setting so um, that's first but gilbert arenas and even paul pierce kind of made some comments that's getting some backlash where gilbert arenas compared um, the sudan team to the cool runnings bobsled team uh, on the movie and so People are saying it's weird because he doesn't have that same energy for the European teams, and he has all these jokes and everything. But Godfrey's going to point out some things and how many great basketball players has come from Africa, you know, all the way back. You know, you, you go back to the 90s, you know, and probably even before the end. And you see some of the greatest players that's ever played in the NBA comes from there. And, um, Gilbert's making that joke. And, and let me say this, right? The South Sudan team, they have Wayne and Gabriel. Uh, they have, uh, uh, what's my man's name, going to Duke next year. They, they have a lot of talent. Like, this isn't like the Angola teams back, you know, in 92 or nothing like that. This is a team that has a lot of NBA experience, you know. I think Don Maker was trying to get on that, that team, too. So it's a lot of people who have played at the highest level um, that's on that team. And I know people say, oh, those are bench warmers. But you kind of get a glimpse in the reality of what people can do whenever they play for their country. These guys aren't on the bench because they can't play, you know. Sometimes it's... It doesn't fit with the team needs or they are just a little bit less than the NBA players. But you better believe, like, the guys that don't play, they get the best of some of the best players in practice sometimes. I mean, it is what it is. But we're going to look at what Gilbert said first, and we're going to check out the response. We got the males almost lost to some Africans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we almost lost to them. And the king had to save. The king had to save us. <laughs> I know the LeBron haters are mad. <laughs> we almost lost to the, <laughs> the the Ahi Ahi tribe. This is crazy. Man, Embiid over there, goddamn throwing the game. He throwing the game for his cousins and shit. We don't supposed to be losing to air up there. <laughs> Come on, man. Cool Runnings? We don't supposed to lose to the Cool Runnings team. They don't even have shoes. They get their shoes from America. We got to ship them shoes. They don't even have basketball ribs, dog. <laughs> Manu Bull, I seen he had to walk, what, an hour and a half to go shoot basketball. We lose it to people who don't even, they got baskets in the back. They, they shooting on fucking peach baskets in dirt, no shoes. <laughs> I don't know. South Sudan, uh, here we come. Here we they, come, South Sudan. They had to qualify. Remember, That's what I'm saying. Who Luka, they played against? Luka's team didn't get in, so. Because they lost to Greece. Yeah. They yeah, lost to Greece. But they what's on Luka's team other than Luka? I mean, let the Wayne has been good, though. They, they, they've they been good over the years. So, but they didn't qualify. They lost to Greece. And now we got we got South Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, man. He's sitting there laughing, man. Nah, what I'm saying, like, they should have just put Lithuania in, right? Yeah. Like, how did South go, Sudan so get we in? We might go all small lineup. <laughs> no, look, yeah. this game, we gonna play Langston Galloway, <laughs> Micah Powder. <laughs> oh, yeah, Micah. Uh, yeah. They gonna Powder, play Nigel, Galloway, Nigel, Nigel Davis. Davis. And we yeah. still gonna win by 30. You're, you're lucky you're not playing East Sudan. I hear they're really loaded. East, East Sudan, Sudan now. Right? Where y'all get this from? They got basketball teams out there. <laughs> <laughs> they got basketball courts. Hey, look, they got commercial breaks. Hey. The most alarming thing about what was just said by Paul Pierce is they doing that, and Skip felt comfortable enough to chime in, you know, and talking about people of color um, from Africa, man. And that, that's just not cool. Him and Keyshawn up there laughing. It, it was no place for that 
type of joke, you know. Um, obviously, they qualified, and the team is playing really well. So, William Gabriel, who was instrumental in the, them almost winning against Team USA, he says, I'm so proud of how my teammates represented our country yesterday. We responded to arrogance and ignorance with pride and class. We represented the entire continent of Africa. The only difference is opportunity. It's only a matter of time before African basketball catches up to the rest of the world. We proved that opinion is the lowest form of human knowledge. It requires no accountability or understanding. Instead, it's based on what a person chooses to believe or assume is true. A group of refugees were able to battle against some of the best basketball players ever on a global stage. The future is bright. South Sudan stand up. So that's what one of the players had to say. Former NBA player and South Sudan coach Lou Aldean responded, and he said, I normally don't pay attention to these type of comments, but as an African, a leader in my community, and the president of South Sudan Basketball Federation, I feel it is important to respond. This is for those who have asked about these comments, those who are offended by them, and everyone who has followed our story. I'm not upset or angry at these ignorant remarks made by my former colleagues. I was more disappointed to see them coming from two individuals I've always respected. The comments made by Paul Pierce show misinformation and a lack of research. However, he used it as a teachable moment to share positivity once he was informed. Thank you to Paul Pierce for apologizing that I can respect. Growing up, I heard many similar comments and those very remarks are some of the things that motivated me to change the narrative. Africans now show solidarity and support for each other more than ever. Moments like this are not for us to get upset and lash out. Many Africans and black people who embrace their African heritage are working hard to bring all black people closer by educating and sharing stories and historic moments, teaching that we have much more in common than differences. As for Gilbert's comments, they were certainly more disrespectful and cruel. Personally, I don't care much. I would never trade places with anyone. Being African is special. However, for young African and African-American kids who admire and listen to Gilbert, these comments can make you think less of yourself and make the rest of the world think less of Africans. Those who are easily misled may make comments that reflect self-hate more than pride. There's nothing about our history that we should run away from. So we got to give it up for William Gabriel and Lou Aldean for how eloquently they spoke and they didn't lash out. You know, they're using this as a teachable moment and showing, look, I can play basketball, but that brain, you know, in my head is able to think and I can articulate things in a way that people may not even think we can with how you just portrayed us, you know? And so I'm glad that they responded the way they did because it shows a total ignorance. It really makes Paul Pierce and Gilbert look ignorant in the end, you know, so the joke is actually on them. But we're gonna listen to what Godfrey had to say. He went in, let's check it out. You guys saw the video of Gilbert Arenas making fun of the Sudanese basketball team that damn near beat the USA team. We don't supposed to lose to the cool runners team. They don't even have shoes, they get their shoes from America. Listen. I'm a podcaster myself, comedian. I'm down with the jokes. You know, I joke on stuff too, you know, but uh, it, it was a little weird because it looked mean, you know what I'm saying? It almost felt racist. Is that possible? If you're black, you can be racist against your own people? It just felt real hateful for some reason. I don't know, I'm not, you, know, you guys understand where I'm coming from? Growing up in Chicago, being a product of Nigerian parents and you know, African-American kids would call you black African booty scratcher, you know, or do you chase lions? And you know what I'm saying? Do they even have food or cars in Africa? They used to do that to me, my sister and my brother. And that's what it reminded me of. Like I said, I don't have a problem with people joking because I joke hard on different cultures too. But the way he was talking about the Sudanese basketball team was a little weird because there's a lot of great African players in the NBA right now. There's actually Africans that actually have a championship ring, just to let you know. I think it's the Milwaukee Bucks, Nigeria, bang. Plus, a lot of his jokes were old. 
right? They were a little dated. I thought maybe he watched some old footage of Comic View and Def Jam and some YouTube videos from the 90s and together. It was a little off-putting. I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Where are you coming from with this? You know, and why are you surprised that Africans have athletic talent? You know, that rant reminded me of like, when you get some white guys, they'll be by themselves in a room and they decide to be really racist, but they look both ways and they go, hey, did you see the Sudanese basketball team? Oh, Jesus, who brought Amistad on the court? <laughs> I think I see Jaiman Hansu trying to make a layup. <laughs> hey, Kunta Kinte, nice shot. <laughs> Oh, did they get fed before they came on there? I'm surprised I didn't see any flies on court. <laughs> it reminds me of that Soul Glow dude in Coming to America who was asking Eddie Murphy at the basketball game, man, you from Africa? <laughs> you probably be chasing lions and shit. I hope that you keep that same energy for the European teams. Let's say the European teams have a close game. I hope you keep that same energy. I hope you do that. Don't cheat now. Don't cheat now. This is Gilbert Arenas who brought guns and to the arena and stuff. You feel where I'm coming from? It's felt very hateful, I don't know, Gilbert. And you're a type of person, he causes controversy, you know what I mean? He says some things that are controversial, which is fine. It's what you do when you're podcasting, you know what I'm saying? I get it. But the, the African thing, it was weird because African Americans and Africans already clash. Half the time, Africans get a stereotype that they hate African Americans and African Americans hate Africans. So they got us fighting amongst each other and that situation doesn't really help out the situation. So Gilbert, update your ignorance, man. Come on, press refresh, come up with some better shit. That's all I'm saying. A Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe. He I'm just playing. So we have Gilbert Arenas on IG, and he responded to Lou Alding. He said, I respected you as a player and Will as a coach. Sorry for my disrespectful comments. Good luck, but not enough luck to win gold. Silver is all yours. So he responded in a good way, you know, pretty much saying he rooting for Team USA, but he's rooting for them second, you know, and um, got to know that these guys played around the same time, and it put it in perspective to hear that from Lou Alding. And I'm sure, you know, he probably wasn't even thinking about that when he made the joke, but this is why you got to be uh, cognizant of what you're saying. Uh, it could hurt someone that you care about. But even if Lou Alding wasn't there, those comments weren't appropriate to make. But good to see him apologize. Hopefully there's some sincerity there. Wow. If somebody tells you to update your ignorance, that really got to make you feel really stupid, you know, when you <laughs> something like that. Um, but Gilbert... Again, this is a man who brought guns in the locker room. Paul Pierce, this is a guy who got out of his body at a club in Boston. The star player gets stabbed in his own city, you know, and see if somebody was to make fun of these things, they would have a problem with it. You know, I don't know if Gilbert would have a problem with the gun thing because he knows that's stupid, but Paul, you know, you got to realize, like, what you laughing at sometimes, your situation, you can look back in the mirror and people could laugh at some things you might not think is funny. Um, you know, when you, you've you done some of the things they've done. You know what I'm saying? So I would ask them to be mindful of that. There's no need to down these players. If anything, you should be like, some of these players need a job in the league. You know, well, JT Thor, I know he's on the Hornets team right now. Carly Jones, I, I don't know if he just has citizenship for, for playing over there, but he's a player that needs to be in the league right now, the way he was carving up Team USA. Uh, William Gabriel, I'm not sure if he's still on the roster. But, again, it's a lot of fringe NBA players on there. So, when I hear Skip and Paul Pierce say they don't recognize people on the roster, well, you guys don't cover a sport that you talk so much about because – William Gabriel was right there on the team with AD and LeBron. Did you see the way they embraced after the game? It's because they knew him like that, you know. And so to, to say that, it just makes you look bad. It makes you look like you're not watching the games, actually. Um, you see a lot of these guys. JT Thor has made it into the Hornets rotation. So that means when Miles Bridges, 
uh, Brandon Miller, some of those guys go to the bench. JT Thor comes in. So these aren't just some bum basketball players, you know. And they need to put some respect on these guys' name, man. If, if they almost beat Team USA, well, actually, if they qualify, you know they're not bad. And so the rest of the world has more NBA players now. You can't deny that, you know, because they – doing the whole basketball global thing. And they have, even have an NBA Africa, you know, to help some of these guys up and coming. You know, so it's not the same as it was back in the 90s. You know, Paul Pierce laughing like that. Paul Pierce, do we need to revisit the USA teams you were on that went over there and lost? I think it might have been FIBA play. I don't know if you've ever been an Olympian. But we can revisit some of the teams that you had and went over there and – did y'all win bronze or did you not win a medal at all one time? I mean, so we, we can go back and look at that too. And that's funny. You know, we can laugh at that <laughs> if you want to laugh at something. But I want to know what you guys think in the comments.